Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to our Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today, we're going to do makeovers on some thrifted items that I've recently gotten from Goodwill. So, at first, I had the candle holder and then a light and then this strange little wooden thing and a photo holder. So, first of all, we're going to do this strange looking little candle holder. This thing is chunky and weird, and I don't know if I really like it, but I knew that I wanted to do something different with it. So I'm going to try and take this handle off, which proved to be a little bit difficult, but with a screwdriver, a straight blade screwdriver, and removing that screw, I was able to loosen it up and pop it right off. There we go. So we got that off and uh, we're gonna set the handle aside, maybe use that for something else. And because it's a shiny exterior uh, sealer on there, we're gonna just give it a quick sand down to uh, make it easier for the paint to stick to it. Now I'm gonna take my, uh, that candle holder cup off the top. That was quite an excessive screw that they had in there. Uh, this thing is beefy. It is, is, it's quite the probably shop project, I guess. But I'm going to take my burgundy chalk paint and I'm going to paint it all burgundy. Now I did two coats on this just to make sure it was good and covered. It One coat probably would have been enough, but uh, I wanted to just make sure it was good and covered. Mm -hmm. Once I got the two coats on there and it was dry, I gave it a quick sand down around the edges and just gave scuffed it up, made it look uh, old and aged. And then I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I went over the whole piece. Uh, this, this deepens the color and also the spots where you sand down, where you get those raw spots, it deepens that uh, wood color underneath. So I really like using this on my paint when I have it. I've been out for a little bit and so I haven't been using it, but I went and bought two bottles this time so I won't run out very soon, I hope. <laughs> so I'm just wiping it back once I put it on there and it just makes it look so uh, nice and just a deep rich color when it's dried up. I'm also going to take this uh, cup holder and uh, or coaster and just uh, put a hole in the middle of the the coaster and then I'm going to put that screw in it that came from the handle because it's smaller and not so beefy like the candle cup had and then I'm going to take some antique wax and just make it look like it's stained I want a nice dark stained look on this and I'm gonna put it all over and then I will go back and wipe it back. I'm gonna make the hole on the very top, just not go all the way through the coaster, but on the very top, a little bit bigger with a bigger drill bit so that the top of the screw will sit down into the piece of wood instead of on top so that if I put a a candle on there or I set something on it, it will sit down a little bit flatter. I added a little bit of dark paint around the edges to make it even more distressed and this piece is done. Now this makes a great riser for a bird or any decor that you want to put on there or even a candle. I picked up this punch tin light just the way it is, no shade, no nothing. Uh, I think it did have a bulb in it but it did not work. So I'm going to, I just took it out, threw it away and I'm going to give this a black paint job. I, I love the punch tin in black and I wanted to give it uh, more of an old look so I think the black will do that so I did two coats on this it didn't uh, cover very well on the first coat or enough that I liked it so I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, a second coat on there 
Once it is dry, I'm just gonna go over it with my sandpaper a little bit around the edges and just scuff it up and make it look distressed. I even did on the outside around the corners. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take some Mod Podge and take that little candle in the middle and we're gonna grubby that up. So I'm taking my Mod Podge and going around the outside of this little uh, candle cup holder and coating it really nicely all over. Then I'm gonna get my grubby mix and we're gonna hold the lantern over it and put the grubby mix on there and make it look like a grubby candle. Mm -hmm. I tried really hard not to get it into where the bulb goes to get any of that spice mix in there. You know, maybe you could pop in a piece of paper or some tape so that it wouldn't uh, get in there and stick. But then I decided I was going to take some Mod Podge around the outside and make it look a little bit rusted on the light. So I just randomly put Mod Podge on so that the mix would stick and it's just, just random all over wherever I felt like it needed a little bit of a rust look. I also did it around the inside circle part around the light. When that was done and dry, I took my Rust-Oleum Spray Clear Sealer and sealed the whole piece. I, uh, and I have these dipped silicone lights that I buy by the big box of them because I use them a lot. And I like to have them around when I need them and I bought them off from Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description for you. But I'm gonna add that to my little light. And then I thrifted a long time ago one of these Hurricane covers, and I like to pick them up when I find them so that I can use them you know, on random projects that I have. So I think this makes this a really cute primitive light just like this, and you could stop here, or you could stop before you even put the grubby mix on anything. That's totally up to you. But I'm gonna take a little bit of Spanish moss and go around the outside and just tuck that in. No glue, no nothing. I'm just tucking it in there. It's got a nice bowl there, so I think it will look, you know, stay in fine and it looks really cute. So now I'm gonna take some of my pit berries from a garland that I purchased. I like to buy it by the garland instead of the sprig just because it lasts me longer. And I took about uh, three pieces off and I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and kind of twist the little branches a little bit. It makes them look fuller, it fills in a space, and I just like how it looks sometimes when I'm doing my projects. So then I'm just gonna lay that on top of my Spanish moss, and then I have some of these bowl fillers that I made from clay, and I recently did a video on that, and I'll link that down below. This one has, this round one has, some bees on it and then I grubbied it up and then I did some stars as well. So I'm gonna use that as fillers. I'm gonna put three of each in there. You don't have to do this, but I thought it might look pretty cool. So there we go, there's our light. I'm not sure what the original maker of this uh, thought to do with it or what they wanted to do with it. I think it's just like a shop project, but uh, I see a lantern holder out of it. I've made these before and did a video on it, and I'll link that down in the description so you can see how I make those. But I really love how this one's made, and so I thought I would use this uh, as a lantern holder as well. So I have this little hook, and um, I'm gonna put it on the side. There's one end that sticks out a little bit further, so I'm gonna stick that hook on there. But first I'm going to sand down this middle part. It is really, um, it's got a lot of little pieces of wood sticking out of it, and see, I just checked my finger because I kind of caught it on there. I was hoping I didn't get a splinter. 
but I didn't want anybody else to. So I just sanded it down a little bit and smoothed it out. And then I took some black paint on all the brown parts and painted it all black. I did two coats on this just to, to cover the black up a little bit and then, uh, or the brown up a little bit. And then uh, once it was all dry, I went back and sanded down the edges. Once it was all sanded down, I went over it with some antique wax and just the parts that I painted black to richen up that paint and to make the raw wood that came through a little bit richer color. It um, still looks distressed, but it's just a, a richer, darker color on there. So, and then I wiped it back. I left the middle the way it was. I did get a little bit on there and I just sanded it off but I kind of like the middle of the lighter color, so I'm just gonna leave it there, just like that. I bought these cute little plastic lanterns. They're little battery lanterns. Uh, geez, a few years ago, I think. Uh, and if I can find them in my Amazon purchases, I will link them down below or if I can find them at all, I will link them down below. I'm pretty sure it was Amazon that I got them from. But anyway, I took some, it, they were, it was a little bit shiny, so I took some antique wax and went over it to dull it down just a little bit. I took the little plastic, the clear plastic globe off before I did that, so I didn't get any on that. And then I put some Mod Podge on the little light with a paintbrush. I had a little bit of black paint on it, which was not intentional. It just happened that way but it worked out fine that you can still see the light just fine and it works I I guess it was just still uh, had some in the brush that when I cleaned it so anyway I and it was still wet with the wax on there so when I put the grubby mix on uh, it stuck to the lantern a little bit and I kind of liked it I kind of like that old uh, rusty look that it gave it so I just left it uh, the way it was. I didn't seal it or anything, so it probably will rub off, you know, every time you touch it, but that's okay. I think it looks cool. So now I'm going to take my little hook and I'm going to drill a little hole, figure out where I want to put it on the longer end where it sticks out a little bit further. It's just a tiny bit, but it's enough so you can see that um, it is a little longer on one end than the other. So I'm just gonna take a little drill bit and start a little hole so that I can get my little my little hook in there and I'm just gonna screw that in so that I can hang my lantern from it. And then I just added, once that was done, I added some pit berries and a bow at the top, just a little bit of decoration and this piece is done. I've had this piece in my stash for quite a while. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Uh, I like the primitive look of it, but it's just, it's not really what I want. So I thought that I would try and transform it into uh, something else. So I'm gonna take it apart. It's got these nice little tabs on there so I can pull this off. This is a picture frame and the middle part there goes on and it's a little light if you wanna put the light in there you can so it's got a little box there and I only paid a couple bucks for it and there's nothing really wrong with it there it came with a bulb and everything so I was pretty glad to see that 
uh, when I popped the glass off the back, it had a little bit of glue holding it on there. So I tried to get that off the best that I could. I removed the picture from the glass. I have something different in mind for it. It came off pretty easily, so now I can focus on the frame itself. So I'm gonna sand down where it says home sweet home just a little bit so that when I paint it, it doesn't come back through. It's not raised, it's actually in the paint, but um, I, I'm glad that I sanded it down because I did have to coat that that just one little spot like three times in order to get that to not come through. So my first coat that I'm going to use once I get done sanding this down, I'm just scuffing it up so that the paint will stick a little bit better, is I'm going to be using the uh, Waverly Black ink paint and I'm gonna give it a full coat all around. Once that was dry, I sealed it with some Rust-Oleum Clear Spray sealer and now I want to put on some mushroom paint. Now I'm jumping the gun here because I actually wanted to add some Vaseline around the edges because I am going to be doing a layered paint uh, technique on this. So I started to put my mushroom paint on and then I stopped and got my Vaseline or petroleum jelly whatever you want to call it and I just putting it on random spots on my picture frame where I don't want the next uh, layer of paint to stick. So I just put a little bit on here and there around the edges and in different spots. And now I'm going to go ahead. I don't have a lot in this bottle, so I'm just going to tip it up like that. And I'm going to put a coat of this mushroom paint. This is from Folk Art. I love this color. And I'm going to put this on this full coat on this frame. So now I'm going to add, once it's dry, the Vaseline again on opposite spots that I used it for the mushroom color. And I'm going to add this Waverly Moss Green over the top of that. And then that Vaseline is going to cause a resist for the paint that I put over it. So when I wipe it back, you're going to get all three layers of colors. Now I sealed in between the black uh, and the mushroom color so that I couldn't it wouldn't go back down to the burgundy. I didn't want that showing at all. So that's why I spray sealed that first layer. So then I wiped it back and you can see where it just distressed in certain spots and you can see the mushroom and the black and of course the green color, which is gonna go with the next thing that I do. So I did, because I got paint all over this thing, I did go around all my inside edges and the outside edges and just put a coat of black paint on there to keep it, uh, to just to make it look nice. And I also painted the back. So this is a piece of I, it, like a clear mylar type. It's kind of like a stencil material. I had to dig this out because my glass that I had gotten all ready and prepped and to go in, I broke. So I had to dig around and find something else to go in there that was kind of see-through. Uh, but uh, not totally see-through because I wanted to be able to see the picture that I'm going to put on the front, which is this Tim Holtz aviary uh, paper that I got, and I'll put that down in the description. It's beautiful paper, and every time I use it, they uh, it sells out on Amazon just because it's just gorgeous. So it's a very uh, thin, tissuey paper, and I just apply it with a little bit of Mod Podge, just like I would decoupage paper. And I just take a coat and I just did a little bit and I, and I did it in sections. So I did a little bit on the bottom and then uh, I put that on and then I did the next section and the next section. my roller to get rid of any bubbles or wrinkles that I had in there and it worked really well to flatten it out. I used some of my homemade tea stain to spray it on the picture and just kind of tamp it back and uh, just give it an antique look. Then I took some antique wax and ran around the just the edges and made it a little bit darker so that it went from darker to lighter on the picture 
and I think that came out really nice and it looks really nice and antique. Now it's time to put this frame back together. I had painted the box with a light in it and put the light back, the bulb back in. Now I'm going to attach the, um, the box to the back and show you that I did antique wax the edges of the frame as well. I hope you enjoyed these transformations and makeovers that I did today using some simple changes with paint and some grubby mix and just, just easy stuff. So please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.